Blog Talk Radio. Simeus, 106. You have dealt with these matters very thoroughly, so not just a little. 107. Yes, your remarks, unfortunately, correspond to the bitter truth, but some things could still be changed for the better in everything. If you would compose an explanatory writing and submit it to the governments, and if your remarks would then be dealt with, which isn't clear, unfortunately. 108. But still, you should write these remarks and declarations at the appropriate time, and to be sure, in the month of February, 1980, and submit these to the state governments of the earth. Billy, if that is your wish, then I'll do it, of course, but to tell the truth, I expect nothing of it for one won't listen to a single human being, especially when he is labeled as a spinner and visionary, as this is the case with me. Simeus, 109. Nevertheless, you should do it. Billy, okay, your wish shall also be mine. Then should I also mention details and exact data with this, like, for example, the date of death of Tito and that of Indira as well as the sad and murderous misery that will break out in Persia after the taking over of power of the insane Ayatollah Khomeini. And should I also mention the inglorious end of this one and of the murderous Shah, which approaches the two? Semyas, 110. No, you may not make any public announcements about that, as this would lead to confusions and catastrophes for which you could never take responsibility, Billy, then those events are also taboo, which will happen in Germany, Switzerland, and in America, and which will also range outside of politics? Semyas, 111. You must also be officially silent about those, also about what will occur in the South American countries, in Africa and in various European countries and bloody events of a political and criminal form. 112. You should also make no more predictions, as I've already advised you. Billy, by that, do you mean only the politically criminal ones, which will exhibit unusual degeneracies in the future, or the criminally criminal ones, which will fall into similar malicious courses like the political ones? Semyas. 113. It applies to everything. Billy, and what about the fanatical murders, suicides, and massacres from the religious sectarians and terrorists, who will start regular slaughters? And what about, for example, the Queen of Holland, who should resign, according to my calculations, in the spring of 1980? Do I also have to be silent about that? Semyas. 114. If it concerns such harmless things, like the resignation of this queen, then the disclosure of your knowledge plays no major role, for this queen isn't in a world political situation that could provoke the important changes through an early disclosure of the fact that she wants to leave her office. 115. In addition, until now, I knew nothing about the fact that this queen wants to rid herself of her office. 116. Do your calculations relating to this agree? Billy, I think so. Haven't you dealt with these things, then? Semyas, 117. No, because so far, there was no reason to do so, for the country of this queen is, for the time being, of no major importance because the foreign policy of this country has a correspondingly flat shape. Billy, oh, I see. But what about the terrorist and sectarian happenings, etc.? Semyas, 118. Also about those, I must obligate you to be silent publicly. Billy, okay, then just so be it. It gives me no joy anyway to bring these things to the man. On the other hand, it is also pointless because the human beings also wouldn't change through this. And thirdly, I would only be insulted even more as being crazy and a visionary. Semyas, 119. Sure, by this, you can save yourself that. 120. Have you even calculated other coming events? Billy, no, I haven't dealt with any more. 
them yes, 121. Then I would still like to tell you other things, which will be of importance for you, 122. The first one is associated with your work that you are to do in the month of February, 1980. Billy, then it shall even be so, but in addition, still another question, what we have discussed just now, may I announce this then, since it will, indeed, be in the contact reports. Semyas, 123. You may surely do that then, since you didn't mention more exact details. 124. But now, I would like to tell you the other interests and still ask you whether you have also made calculations concerning the Olympic Games in the year 1980, part of which is to be held in Russia. Billy, no, why? Should I have done that? Semyas, 125. No, it just would have been interesting for you, and moreover, I could have saved myself some explanations. Billy, no, I haven't dealt with that. I wouldn't have known why I should have done that. These games are, after all, not of so much importance that they could have a determining influence on the upcoming world situation, right? The Olympics are, after all, a non-political affair and were also brought into life in this form. To my knowledge, if I am not mistaken, the founder of the Olympic Games was named Pelopon, a distant descendant of a Minoan philosopher, who, in the year 468 before Christ, called these games into life, and he regulated the fact that games take place every four years in a sporting fashion with fist fights, horseback riding and horseback riding games, with long distance running, armed sports fights, with speakers, poets, philosophers, and artists of all types. Even a sort of pentathlon was already brought into life by him. His condition at the founding of the Olympic Games was that at these competitions, members of all Hellenic tribes and Minoans should meet together uniformly and peacefully, as well as inhabitants of other lands, by what means a peaceful coexistence should be created and a true peace should be developed. Furthermore, his condition was that political disagreements or even acts of war between various states involved in these games and competitions should never be a reason for these states or their athletes, etc. not to participate in these peaceful competitions. His condition singly came from the fact that the Olympic Games may never be used as a means for political pressure or otherwise as some other peace interfering means. Semyas, 126 your remarks regarding these matters are astonishingly exact, but in one respect, you were very mistaken. 127. The Olympic Games have, unfortunately, already been caught in the wheels of the politics of the earthly governments for many decades, and this will be openly expressed to the world for the first time in the year 1980. Billy, that is just unreal. Is it because of the fact that the invasion of the Russian army will take place at the end of 1979? Semyas, 128. You are very clever and think very quickly. 129. Sure, that will be the reason. Billy, then I can already imagine what will come. First, the Americans will cry out and will try to undermine or boycott the Olympic Games in Russia. Then soon, a wide variety of America-friendly countries will unanimously join in in this wolf howling and will enforce a worldwide Olympic boycott, and with certainty, also approximately at least 50% of the Swiss population will be involved in this indelicate dance because most Swiss, in truth, never behave neutrally and pursue the dirtiest politics, of which they don't have the slightest notion, however. But maybe it's good that this will happen because through this, then, the world public will one day understand and clearly learn whose brainchild a large mass of the Swiss people really is and, above all, where the much vaunted neutrality lies and how far this reaches. Ah, that really is a dirty swine business, I think, and to be sure, both this phony neutrality of many Swiss and, on the other hand, that such a dirty intrigue of an Olympic boycott can ever take place at all, 
that politics ever interfere in these competitive games at all. That contradicts, in every form, the original ideas, wishes, and conditions of the founder of the games as well as the old, traditional, sincere efforts of all those human beings who have participated in these games for nearly three millennia in a peaceful and condition-fulfilling form. That really is a rather damned and dirty mess, and those who cook up this mess are just as hopeless swines as those who support this. I would like to have said that with an absolutely neutral opinion and in regard of the fact that I regard the conditions, in terms of peace, peacemaking, and everything associated with it, of the founder of the Olympic competitions as probably the most admirable accomplishment ever of an earth human being. But what's the use of this, if some swines, who still call themselves earth human beings, make this probably best idea an accomplishment of a far-thinking and peace-loving human being simply on scrupulies, just so that they can prove their power through this and likewise hide their dirty anxiety as well as their absolute inability to govern and to make the right decisions that would finally create a global peace. But these fellows neither have any idea of how to lead a humanity nor a clue about leading a single people not to mention that they should feel bound to a promise that their original forefathers made and swore, to create peace on the earth at last. Oh damn it, how damn dirty these swines must really be, oh damn it, damn. Semyas, 130. You were extremely excited. Billy, how should I not be? Damn it again. What do the Olympic Games have to do with all the shit politics? Nothing, nothing at all. Quite the contrary, they should be such a work, that through them, peace becomes made and peace becomes maintained between the earth human beings, without even a single word of shit politics being dragged in at the same time. Semyas, 131. Sure, your words correspond to the deepest truth, and also all your statements about all the concerns are no less laden with truth. 132. But you shouldn't excite yourself because of that but rather act at the given point in time. Billy, I will, and I certainly won't let on about anything up to then. When should I go at it, then? Semyas, 133. In the first or second week of February, 1980. Billy, I will do that. Damn it again. I'm really neutral. But nevertheless, one truly has to intervene there. Semyas, 134. Sure, and you have thereby saved me many words, if I would have had to explain everything to you. 135. But you will still continue to retain your neutrality, even when you will make these things clear at the given point in time. 136. You represent, singly and alone the facts of actuality, without actuating yourself politically. 137. Thus, no reasonably thinking human being will be able to accuse you of a breach of neutrality. 138. Only, when you do your work, you have to appeal, singly and alone, to the facts of actuality. Billy, I will certainly do that, and I won't interfere in political matters. That just isn't me. For me, Russia is Russia and America is America, or China is China and Switzerland is Switzerland. And every single human being in one of these or in any other country of the earth is just a human being to me. To me, no one is a Swiss, a Russian, an American, Chinese, German or anything else that could refer to a nationality, because to me, everyone is only a human being. Semyas. 139. Sure, I know that very well, also that you actually think and act in such a way, and precisely this also gives us the certainty that you will do this difficult upcoming work in the right manner. Billy, while I am honored by your confidence, girl, nevertheless, I still find this earthly shit politics to be the most terrible earthly shit. Unfortunately, I cannot express that differently. Semyas, 140. Sure, I understand you very well. 141. 
I would be very happy and delighted about it if I, too, was able to express myself in such words and feelings, as you can do this. 142. I actually envy you because of that. Billy, then just start cursing, damn it again. It really happens quite automatically when one has a large enough anger in his belly. Just try it once. Come on, just curse once, maybe then you will be better. Semyas, 143. Does that correspond to your true opinion? Billy, but of course, my golden child. Just curse one strongly. Semyas, 144. Should I really do that? Billy, yes, try it once. Semyas, 145. Well? Damn. Billy, you say that like a person dying of thirst, who is totally apathetic. There is no feeling in it at all. Semyas, 146. I can't do it differently, however. Billy, maybe you'll still learn it someday. But let's leave that. If it is allowed, then I would like to address a somewhat sensitive question to you. Semyas, 147. Sure. Billy, good. During the great journey, you talked with Ta once about the fact that the effective time of our mission would amount to approximately 100 years before I would clamber around and continue to spread the mission again in this world as another personality. Our contacts have now been running since the month of January, 1975, so the running time, therefore, would have to go until the year 2074, or rather, round it up, until the year 2075. Is that right? Semyas, 148. Yes. That is the running time, calculated from the point in time, from which you resumed your mission. 149. After a long interruption, you officially started with this again on the date of Tuesday the 28th of January, 1975, at 1 p.m., when I called you. Billy, how exactly you still know that? I could no longer remember it so very exactly. It just wasn't that important to me. By this, I mean the time and the day. Semyas, 150. I understand. 151. But now, what do you really want to know? Billy, first of all, I would once again like to have detailed information about this effective time, and then, once again, more detailed information about my next incarnation and the further mission associated with it. Semyas, 152. Before the year 1980, however, you may not speak of it and also may not distribute the written information about it. Billy, until what date? Semyas, 153. Until the third month of the year. Billy, the beginning, middle or end of it. Semyas, 154. Not before the 15th day. Billy, so the middle of the month. Good, I will adhere to that. Semyas, 155. Sure, you will do that. 156. So listen, then, 157. With the beginning of your new mission on the 28th of January, 1975, that effective running time began, which was calculated at approximately 100 years. 158. But this means that the work of your mission should last for about 800 years in its effect, before the point in time comes when your teaching can become fully effective. 159. In other words, I want to declare with this that the effects of your mission work will last for 800 years and will be preparatory for the point in time in the year 2875, when you, as another person, should step once more from the other worldly area into the light of this material world. 160. Thus, after your leaving of this world, you should only remain in the other worldly area for a few years, in order. Then, to step into appearance again already in the year 2075, 
if all the things of the determinations fit themselves together in such a way that no shifts would come about. Billy, so such a shift would be possible or is even already determined? Semyas, 161. Sure, that is, after all the previous failures, very well possible, but it is, even with certainty, no longer probable. 162. You always have to consider, however, that only the form of the goals of life and, thus, also the goal of your mission become predetermined by you, but not an exact establishment of time. 163. An exact determination of time only occurs in each case when a spiritual life form has separated from the material body and has gone into the otherworldly area, in order to work further there as a pure spiritual form and to evolve further. 164. In your highly evolved case, however, the fact is already given that you, in your material life, can make a fairly accurate determination of the year of your next incarnation, but this can still vary a little, so by about two to three years. 165. This self-determination possibility of the rebirth time of the spirit form still in the material, so in the physical life can only take place, however, if a life form has already reached a certain spiritual evolution potential, as this is the case with you. 166, however, since you are presently able, in your current physical state, to bring about such a predetermination that is accurate to within two to three years, then this can still change up to the end of your life in such a way, through your further evolution, that the data will be very accurate. Billy, that is known to me, but what exactly is the deal with the effective time of the work? Semyas, 167. In connection with your former activities as other personalities over many thousands of years, you bore very old and earth-world renowned names. 168. Your activities, however, were always informative and instructive for the whole earth-world and its creatures and life forms. 169. As a prophet, this was also your task, to which you have always voluntarily professed yourself. 170. But as always, it was so, that you have never been recognized or acknowledged at the right time in all of your former personalities as the truthful prophet, so not centuries ago, not millennia ago, and not at the present time. 171. But so will it also be in the future. 172. As it is now, so will it also be when you newly step into appearance in your next incarnation. 173. At present, you have been working now in your mission as a prophet since the year 1975, from which effects will result, which will pave your next way for you as of your next incarnation. 174. Thus. You are presently doing a preparatory work, which will bring about quite definite effects and which will spread out up to the year 2075 in such a way that quite definite routes for disseminating the teaching will be opened. 175. Up to the year 2075, changes will have resulted from your present works and efforts, which will then help to facilitate your now newly begun mission. 176. Your mission at later times, however, will always be the same as now, also without bell ringings and trombone sounds, like it is now. 177. You won't be a herald of a boastful nature, as you also aren't now, which is why the humanity of Earth neither bends its knees before you now nor will it bend its knees before you later like it also didn't at former and long past times. 178. But just as you, in your missions as a true prophet of the earth human beings, have already previously erected a truthful and new thought structure for them, which they have, however, forgotten or falsified, so also do you now set up such again. 179. Truly, it is exactly the same thought structure as always. It's just that it has fallen into oblivion for the earth human beings and, consequently, looks new to them. 
180. At the time of your next return as another personality, you will develop this thought structure even further, after which, already then, many years will have had their effect and your teaching will have paved the ways for spirit-directed progress. 181. In particular, it is very important with this that the religious believers learn your teaching, for they are the main earth human beings who live in the greatest confusion and fallaciousness. 182. You know that right at the time of your present life, all earthly religions are in a profoundly critical and crisis-ridden situation, which was already to be foreseen thousands of years ago, that it would be like this at this time, which is, indeed, why you had to step into appearance again exactly at this time. 183. This is so, because at this bitter time of crisis and destruction, the best time is given for the undermining of occultic religions and sects. 184. In this sense, you do, indeed, also work, and indeed, very much better than we. 185. You don't create any union among all the cultic religions and sects, but rather an undermining, a rift, as well as decay, strife, and destruction, and to be sure, without you attacking them. 186. In particular, you achieve this because you don't largely step among the national masses, but somehow remain hidden and fire out your enlightening arrows from the background. 187. Thus, you don't meet the large organizations of the cultic religions and sects directly. Rather, you meet the single individual, who then brings the strife against the untruthfulness that has developed in him into these organizations, spreads at their end, at the same time, begins to destroy and undermine these and to bring these into decay, discord, and downfall. 188. And exactly up to the year 2075, it will have prospered so far in this respect, in accordance with our calculations of the hundred year long effect of time, that your teaching can fully come into effect. 189. You yourself will not appear now or in the future as a rewarder for the cult religious believers, and also not as a condemner or executor of judgment for all those who have lived and acted in the wrong. 190. Again, as always, you are and will be an announcer of truth, a revolutionary against the cruel untruth, a very strong man, like now, who, also at the further coming time, will allow a renewed religious drama to be stirred up and to break loose through truth enlightenment, and you will also allow certain old, traditional rules to play along in this. 191. These my dear friend, are the facts to be mentioned, but which, for certain reasons, you must still conceal from the public until the month of March, 1980? Billy, thanks. That was very detailed. Actually, I'm glad about all these coming events, for somehow, I just feel magnificently pepped up when I can firmly fight against the untruth. Semyas, 192. You were a fighter without an equal, not only now but already since time immemorial. 193. That had already arisen in such a way at primeval times, which is why you were found by us for this mission and asked if you would like to bear it. Billy, as a liar and import, I probably had no other option on this planet, right? Semyas, 194. Sure. But the decision was made by you yourself and with the knowledge of the fact that you would have to lead a very hard fight against the untruth over many thousands of years across a wide variety of personalities. 195. What made this even more aggravating was that you knew that this would have to affect you very badly because due to your difficult mission over the entire time, a very great loneliness would befall you which won't be removed again until the year 3999, when you leave the Earth again at that time. Billy, as an old Lyran, I very often feel, on the Earth anyway, out of place and damn foreign. I really must tell you that once, although I don't want to complain. But anyhow, I have, indeed, 
become an earth human being, for my barbarian life here among all the barbarians, I also find this not so very bad. It could, however, really be different in many ways and somewhat better. But on the whole, I am quite content as an auxiliary earth human being. Certainly, the loneliness nearly overwhelms me sometimes, especially when I would like to talk about certain things, and then just no one is there who can understand my thoughts, but I get over it again in each case. Semyas, 196. That is well known to me. 197. It would even be of necessity, that you would be given more love. Billy, oh, only unpleasant things could arise from that. Because of that, I'd rather close myself off. Oh yes, it would be very nice if everything in this relation could be different or simply somewhat better, but you yourself know that this cannot be done, unfortunately. The difference in evolution is just too great. Moreover, all those who sincerely hold me in love strive very much for me, and this often helps me through unpleasant and difficult hours. The laws of the earth human beings are very complicated and illogical, which is primarily what makes many things aggravating or just simply impossible. Semyas, 198. I, too, apparently haven't devoted enough attention to you during all this time. 199. I recognize that clearly and plainly from your words. 200. Even though you already changed over from the Lyra region to the Earth at a very early time, I have always disregarded this and have always seen you as an Earth human being. Billy, that's what I am now, too, and I have also behaved myself towards you like that. Only sometimes, also the self-deception doesn't help me. Semyas, 201. Sure, I can understand that very well. 202. But from now on, I will try to see you again as that which you truly are. 203. I am sorry, but due to your rigorous effort to present yourself as a genuine earth human being, you have also directed my thoughts in this direction. Thus, I saw you as an earth human being. Billy, somehow, I am, indeed, also such an earth twit. For the devil knows how long. I've already clambered around on this world, after I came to this planet. Since then, I have lived so many lives here as the most varied personalities that I am no longer able to count them. I have an earthly physical body with a spirit from the depths of the universe, as I already said once eight and a half thousand years ago as another personality. This earthly body, however, binds me to this planet and is connected with it from its dust, so to speak, which is why I also have a feeling in me that I somehow belong here. At the same time, I just asked myself, how will I, with such a body, one day go back to my actual home? Semyas, 204. It will no longer be an earthly one, for at the established point in time, parents for you will come to the earth who will procreate your new personality on this world and will give birth to this with your spirit form on your original home world, after your spirit form will have taken possession of its descendant in the mother's womb. Billy, ah, then I am, indeed, calmed. Does this also happen, then, with all the others, who are still roaming around here on the earth? Semyas, 205. Certainly. It will be likewise with them. Billy, that's really comforting to know. But tell me, are there also those in our group, who do not come from this planet originally? Semyas, 206. Sure, many, but I wouldn't like to mention the names to you now openly. 207. If you want to ask me about that again in June or July of 1980? Billy, gladly. Semyas, 208. Up to then, many new things will, indeed, happen, which will also bring you joy and relief. Billy, I know. I just asked myself, whether it might not still go awry, that I should take over a task in a father's stead. Semyas, 
209. Now, you said too much. 210. You shouldn't talk about that openly yet. Billy, I won't give this contact report page out until the middle of March, 1980. Simeus, 211. Of course, I didn't think of that at the moment. 212. Then we can continue to speak of it calmly, if you hold back this information. Billy, good, I still have the question concerning this, what if everything goes awry and the calculations don't fulfill themselves? Simeus, 213. The probability speaks for the fulfillment of the determination. Billy, well, but what if it is suddenly claimed that I am, despite everything? the biological father of the child. Simeus, 214. You know who the biological father will be, but it's not you, in any case, even though many would gladly like to see that. 215. Just with regard to your wife, it wouldn't be allowed to be so, that you could be the biological father. 216. She is, in her development, Still not so far along that such a step might be done. 217. She would neither understand nor accept this, not in her present life, unless she could make a large leap in evolution, which isn't to be expected with her, however, because she is often inclined to failure and unpredictable jealousy. Billy, that won't be of much use, for I know her damn well. Once it has come so far, she, too, will have her thoughts to express, like all so many others. Like others, she will be of the view that I'm lying to her and that I am truly the procreator and, therefore, also the true father. Simeus, 218. That would be absurd, for you are capable of no such untruth, and moreover, you know that the descendant will be procreated by another man if the other fertilization and procreation possibility cannot be taken into consideration. 219. But we will talk about these things again at a later time. Billy, but that is still of no use to me. I can already imagine the drama now, which will let loose around me. Just on the part of my cannibal alone. Simeus, 220. It is to be hoped that in this regard, she will have become of another sense by then and will grasp your words and explanations as truth. Billy, there, you know her poorly, however. She will think that I am lying and, thus, that I am the biological father. Simeus, 221, that may not be true, for you will actually not be the biological father, but will only take over the father's role after the birth of the descendant. Billy. You just don't understand this. Many women of Earth are just not so far along as you all, who give your husbands faith when they tell you all something. Simeus, 222. We don't know such untruths anymore. Billy, of course not. Otherwise, you could also understand my damn problem. When an Earth woman has something placed in her head, she doesn't let go of it so quickly and that my agapula will hammer the crazy idea into her head, that I would have fathered the child myself, I know this in advance. At the same time, I know it too well. Simeus, 223. But that is, indeed, absolutely illogical. 224. If you explain the truth to her, then she has to accept this, nevertheless. Billy. One should be able to have such dreams, as you preserve and maintain them. Simeus, 225. It is, after all, only the truth and reality. Billy, for you, yes, but not for Earth twits. But you don't understand that, unfortunately, let's just leave it at that. Simeus, 226. It is, perhaps, also better, for up to then. Some time will still pass, and during this, certainly very much will still change. Billy, I also don't deny that, but in this respect, you may not give yourself any hopes. Moreover, I don't think, 
despite my hopes that my wife will change, because more and more, I suspect that she is only acting and is leading all of you, me, and all the others around by the nose, which the future will surely prove, as well as her betrayal together with the brothers K and H and various other members, who, according to your statements, will soon have to be excluded from the group or who will jump out themselves in a slanderous manner. Semyas, 227. We'll see then. Billy, and I already see it now. Semyas, 228. You see everything too confusedly and too darkly, at least in regard of your wife. Billy, I could hardly see these things more clearly. Take that from me calmly. Semyas, 229. Do you really mean that? Billy, but of course. As I say it, so will it be. Semyas, 230. That would be very indelicate towards you and your honesty as well as towards us and all group members. Billy, indelicate. That is a fine word, really. Truly, this indelicacy will be quite damn crude and illogical, as well as mangy. Treacherous and libelous. Semyas, 231. Let's let time work, nevertheless. Billy, that is probably the most sensible thing. Let's talk about it again in the next year and the year after the next, if it should be necessary. Semyas, 232. Sure, let's wait for what is coming. Billy, certainly. But what will the date actually be then? Semyas, 233. Are you thinking of the birth? Billy, right. Semyas, 234. I wouldn't like to announce that to you because at the given time, you will try to calculate the exact date anyway. 235. But unfortunately, the circumstances of the failure of the responsible physicians won't allow your calculations to turn out correctly. Billy, does that mean that there will be difficulties? Semyas, 236. That is, unfortunately, inevitable, because the bearing organs of the mother, according to our cognitions, aren't functioning in the form that is necessary for the birth to be able to take place normally through these. Billy, even that, too. As if I already hadn't had enough with the three Caesarian sections of my cannibal. Your words do mean that, right? Semyas, 237. Sure, but there is no reason for you to be concerned, for when the time comes, other than a delayed birth, no major difficulties will appear. Billy, but after that, what then? Semyas, 238. I don't know, because so far, I have only tried to determine the time and form of the birth. 239. This will, however, be about one and a half days later than what you, which I am sure of, are going to calculate with very great accuracy. Billy, shit. This will change certain important factors, which the child is to bring along, right? And what will it be anyway? I mean, what gender will it be? Semyas, 240. It will be a boy. 241. That I will grant you, telling you that, but everything else, you have to calculate yourself. 242. Concerning the certain factors addressed by you, it will, unfortunately, be as you say, that another time, very many things will be changed in such a way that these cannot come into effect in such way as what should be the case in providence and determination. 243. This, however, we are unable to change, and you, too, won't be able to do anything in this regard. Billy, then I can only wait once again and twiddle my thumbs. That is, indeed, still to be coped with, that also in this case, again only a Caesarian section can lead to birth. That's a bit much. Such a birth makes me even more insecure than what a normal birth already does. Semyas, 234. You were very worried. 245. Sure, 
it won't go without a surgical intervention, but there is no reason for concern there. Billy, but why does it always have to be like that? Damn it again. This means, once again, that I must keep my mouth shut for many months, for I can't tell the girl in advance, in what manner the child will come into the world. Through that, I would only evoke unrest and, above all, severe psychological difficulties and anxiety as well as fear. Semyas, 246. So it would be, which is why you really have to be silent about these things for the time being. Billy, once again, that gives me pleasant times, and I'm looking forward to it already. Semyas, 247. I understand you perfectly, and I also feel a certain sorrow inside of me for you. 248. It's probably better if we don't speak of this anymore for now. 249. I also still have other matters to discuss with you, apart from me just talking with you about these things. Billy, of course, but it still makes me wonder whether the child will suffer any damage due to the birth delay, whether it will have an abnormality? Semyas, 250? No. You can be unconcerned about that. 251. The only damage will be that certain capabilities must be developed in him in an especially hard self-effort, with the help of you all. 252. Normally, the prerequisites would have been more easily given. Therefore, the descendant would have learned this on his own and without help from outside. Billy, is that really the entire damage, Semyas? 253. Surely. Billy, then I am calmed. Semyas, 254. Good, then I can speak again of other things. 255. You told me in the course of our conversation that you have calculated some dates of the future. Billy, right. Semyas, 256. At the same time. We also spoke of the head of state of Yugoslavia, of his demise. 257. Concerning him, have you calculated the exact time of death and the date of his going out of this sphere? Billy, I have, here, I've written everything down on this slip of paper. At the same time, it's just strange that I was able to calculate two different dates. The first is the 24th of February. 1980. The time for this is 10.10 10 p.m. The second date is the 4th of May, 1980, and the time for this is 3.04 p.m. and 47 seconds. The fact that there are now two dates, I don't understand. Semyas, 258. Your calculations are very well right, and the one date, like the other one, is of correctness. 259. Tito, the Yugoslavian dictator, will unofficially conclude his physical life on the date of the 24th of February, 1980, or rather, he should do this at this point in time. 260. Truthfully, however, it will be like it was at that time with Generalissimo Francesco Franco in Spain, that he will have an agonizing death, because the doctors, with all their arts and machines, will keep him alive for so long, until death officially occurs on the 4th of May, 1980. 261. As of the 24th of February, 1980, however, it will be the case for Tito that he will be set out of his state mighty function, without the possibility that he can do even only the least in his governmental business. 262. Unofficially, he will, thus, already be dead as of this day. Billy, ah, now I understand. Semyas, 263. Have you also even made any calculations regarding Persia, that is Iran? Billy, no. Semyas, 264. Then I will still explain a few events to you, which can be of importance for you. 265. Around the turn of the year 1980, 
fanatical and Khomeini enslaved student elements will overtake the American embassy in Tehran and will take all of the embassy personnel as hostages. 266. This will lead to serious difficulties in the domestic and foreign policy of America as well as to very inconsiderate and rather childish actions of the American president, who, among other things, will allow an attempt to free the hostages, which will be doomed for failure from the very beginning, to be carried out. 267. The victims here will only be the prisoners in the American embassy but also around a dozen American families in the USA, because with this liberation command of insanity of Carter for the hostages, around 12 American soldiers will lose their lives through a misfortune. 268. Due to the irrationality, incompetence, and confusion of the American president, the action with the aircraft unfit for this purpose will be started. 269. The largest part of these machines will be destroyed due to their own unfitness, together with approximately 12 human lives of the Volunteer Command. 270. These events will still further stir up the crisis already going on for many months until then between the Americans and Iran, and it also won't find an end so soon after this time. 271. This is especially so because also in the interior of the country of Persia, various power groups supply concerns, problems, and acts of war to the revolutionary state and because the Islamic leader Ayatollah Khomeini, who has fallen to insanity, will have beaten the majority of the Iranian people into the fanaticism of insanity serviceable to him. 272. This will ultimately lead to the fact that the first outside of country, External acts of terrorism will find their beginning, so namely first in England, where the Iranian embassy will likewise be occupied and hostages will be taken another time. 273. But also this doing will bring about its bad consequences. Billy, do you mean with your words from just now, that this Khomeini has, already now, fallen to insanity? Semyas. 274. Yes, that is the sense of my words. 275. He still isn't in the full stage, but this will already soon be the case. Billy, then one couldn't even talk sensibly with the guy anymore? Semyas, 276. No. Billy, what I still wanted to ask, to where, then, will the Shansha and his Shabang disappear? Semyas, 277. President Carter of America will commit the inexcusable mistake that he grants the fugitives temporary asylum, which will also contribute to the effects in the embassy in Tehran. Billy, you speak of a temporary asylum. Where will the guy then go after that, this super murderous knave? Semyas, 278. 